Thank you for coming. My name's Howie Hawkins. I'm the Green Party candidate for New York governor. And we're here at the Freedom Wall on the east side of Syracuse, 28 people who demanded more. That's the slogan for our campaign, demand more. So these people are an inspiration to us and we're taking them as an example. Uh, Huey Newton's right over there. I came up in the San Francisco Bay Area. I heard him talking about power to the people as a teenager. And W.E.V. Du Bois right here is uh, the one that corrected history about Reconstruction and got people to say that a multicultural, multiracial democracy was possible and was beginning to be implemented in that period. And we're still trying to do that. And we're here on the east side after this news conference. We're going to meet with community groups looking for the Buffalo Billion. Where is the Buffalo Billion? It doesn't seem to have trickled down to the east side. And I'll be talking in a little minute about economic development and why we can't rely on trickle down. We've got to direct, invest directly in our communities. But first I want to introduce Mark Dunley, the Green Party candidate for comptroller. Mark is more qualified than the current comptroller, Tom DiNapoli, has more financial experience. He ran the Anti-Poverty Hunger Action Network of New York State for three decades and got to know a lot about state budgets and helped uh, organize some audits that the comptroller's office actually undertook. And for the last five years, he's dealt with the biggest problem we face, which is the climate crisis. And he'll explain why that's part of why he's running for governor. I mean, for comptroller. Mark, take it away. Uh, thank you. My name's Mark Dunley, and I'm the Green Party candidate for, for state controller. And there are a number of issues that, as state controller, I want to deal with. I want to deal with the issue of, of corruption. Uh, Buffalo Billions, of course, is on trial right at the moment. I want to deal with the need for the state controller to be uh, more aggressive in terms of oversight of state contracts, especially the corporate welfare, uh, and also advocating for progressive uh, revenue solutions, uh, such as compliance with the uh, existing court order on finances of schools, uh, and also to increase state revenue sharing back to the 8% for local governments at the historic level. But my main concern with the uh, state controller is that for the last five years, I've helped coordinate the statewide campaign around divesting fossil fuels from the state pension funds and the New York City pension funds. Briefly, uh, it makes no sense for the state to invest our pensions uh, in an industry which is destroying the planet. Uh, climate change is the greatest threat um, to humanity. Uh, we saw a three uh, hurricane five level uh, hit this year. Uh, particularly Puerto Rico, we saw uh, people lost power for, for six months. Uh, I've been working a lot on this with uh, 350.org. Since we started the campaign five years ago, we've managed to divest about $6 trillion, that's with a T, uh, worldwide uh, from fossil fuels, including early this year, we convinced New York City to divest. Unfortunately, Tom DiNapoli, as state controller, has refused to divest. He's actually refused to even meet with the groups working on uh, divestment. We have about $6 billion right now invested in uh, fossil fuels, including over more than a billion dollars in Exxon. And the irony is that we have the uh, state attorney general investigating the um, Exxon for lying to the world about the reality of climate change, uh, and yet Tom DiNapoli believes it's more important to continue to uh, pass shareholder resolutions to get climate change studied by Exxon rather than uh, divestment. Uh, so that's my number one focus, and I hope at the end of the campaign we'll be able to report that the state has divested from fossil fuels. But we already are very concerned about corruption. Uh, I think it's very telling that right before the governor awarded you know, the billion dollars or so for the Buffalo Billion, he actually got the state legislature to strip the state controller's office ability to oversee such contracts. And in the last uh, few weeks, uh, there's been an effort at the state legislature uh, to both restore the ability of the state controller to oversee such contracts uh, and also to increase his oversight of the economic uh, development programs. Um, we lost that issue last night. Uh, the State Assembly refused to bring the bill up for a vote, even though it had passed the Senate, uh, mainly because the governor had, did not want to see more state control or oversight. And we heard not a word from uh, Tom DiNapoli, the formerly State Assembly member, 
chastising the assembly speaker for refusing to bring this up. Uh, so those are some of the issues that I want to raise during the controller race. Um, but back to Howie Hawkins, who's the Green Party candidate for governor. Well, Mark talked about divestment to help us along for going to 100% clean energy by 2030. We have a bill in the state assembly called New York Off Fossil Fuels, and it would achieve that goal of 100% clean energy by 2030 uh, if it was passed. Unfortunately, the assembly, the Democratic leadership went for 100% by 2050 with a bill that's weak on benchmarks and really isn't up to the task, which the climate science says we must do to avert runaway global warming and a climate catastrophe. For us, this 100% clean energy by 2030 is the centerpiece of what we call a Green New Deal, which is revitalizing the public sector, both physical infrastructure and social services. So we're talking about clean energy. We're talking about mass transit. We're talking about affordable housing through public housing on a physical services side. And then we need to fully fund education. We need a single payer public health care system. We need to fund arts and culture like this wall. There should be a lot more stuff like this. We have a legacy of that from the New Deal program in the 1930s. And when we talk about a Green New Deal, it's like the New Deal. We're going to do public works to stimulate the economy, build it from the bottom up. And we call it green because we got to deal with this climate crisis and the environmental crisis. Now, that's the bottom up economic development alternative to Cuomo's corrupt pay to play uh, schemes where he gives big donations, big contracts to his campaign donors. That's how you got this Buffalo Billion scam. I'm from Syracuse. We've had some of the developers involved in this trial already convicted of uh, bribery. They're now involved in a big rigging case. Uh, some of them were involved, or one of Cuomo's aides, Joe Prococo, took a bribe from the former National Treasurer of the Democratic National Committee to grease the wheels for the competitive power ventures uh, gas, frack gas plant down in Orange County, which led 10% to the state's carbon footprint. That was built on corruption. Cuomo talks about how he's for renewables. Well, he should pull the permit on that corrupt plant right now and stop that basically carbon bomb, global greenhouse gas bomb that will impact the environment. So, and I'm from Syracuse. Our former mayor just announced on an anti-corruption campaign, Stephanie Miner, well, look, in Syracuse, she had a patronage payroll of over 100 employees on what was called the Syracuse Urban Renewal Agency, which wasn't about urban renewal. That was for 60s anti-poverty money. The state told them to shut it down. It's illegal. But Republican and Democratic mayors since have used it as a personal patronage machine. She had family members on that. She had people she wanted to hire that she couldn't get a contract through the Common Council, including her current campaign manager, who got $84,000 a year for 10, 10 hours of work a week in a contract that Common Council didn't have to approve. And she wants to talk about corruption? Now, why didn't the state go after the city for keeping that operating? It just shows that corruption goes from the top right down to the bottom in the state. So we're not corrupt because we don't take money from the corporate interests. We take it from little people like Bernie Sanders did. And I could go on on more examples. You can ask me about Syracuse corruption. But let me just conclude by saying this. When the primaries shake out in the fall, you're going to have three lanes. You're going to have green standing with the people with progressive solutions to the real problems we face. You're going to have Democrats, Cuomo, Minor, maybe Nixon. They stand for the status quo. The Democrats have been running our cities. They run the state, except for the Senate. They'll get that. But that's the status quo. They're not proposing real solutions. And then you've got, of course, a Republican that wants us to go backwards on everything from civil rights to the environment. So that's what the voters have a choice of. And we're kind of tired of seeing these status quo Democrats called the progressives or the left. We're the progressives. We're the left in this election. So we'll be happy to take questions. What is your reaction now to uh, what was said by Mayor Carroll? We learned so far in what? Buffalo Billion. Yeah. Well, we know what the charges are, and we've been running around the state the last couple of days, so we don't know the latest of what the testimony has been. But it's bid rigging, and Simonelli has a long history going back to organized crime in the city. Not surprising. I can tell you about CORE. I'll give you another example from Syracuse. Stephanie Miner gave them uh, access to the Inner Harbor redevelopment. It's all upscale in one of the most segregated cities. So it increases the class and race segregation in Syracuse. 
Now she got in a fight with them because Cuomo and the county executive uh, got together because the city industrial development agency wouldn't give them tax, more tax breaks. And some of the councilors said they promised they wouldn't go for them. So they went around the city to the county to get the tax breaks through the Onondaga Industrial Development Agency. That's when Miner started having trouble with poor. But before that, we had a public housing project called Kennedy Square, over 400 units of affordable housing. The state owned it. It gave it to core development, no bid, no money down. And it's a weed strewn lot. They tore down the housing. What they want to do is redevelop it upscale, but they haven't even done that yet. Um, that's the kind of insider dealing that is corrupt. Even if there's not indictments around the Kennedy Square thing, we call it legalized bribery because they gave big donations to Cuomo, and then they get these kind of favors like that. They also give big, do big donations to Mahoney, I mean Minor, until they had a beef over the tax breaks. So that's the kind of corruption we're talking about. And well, we'll see what the trial you know, brings out and what the jury says. But on the face of it, it's corrupt because big donations in, contracts out. And it's hard to prove a quid pro quo, but it looks obvious from just on appearances where the money's went yeah. and where the contracts went. But, but on the Buffalo Billion, uh, in the testimony we've heard so far, it, it was routine for the Cuomo administration uh, to allow companies that had given them donation to literally write requests for proposals. Uh, and in fact, the Cuomo administration uh, went so far to uh, rig the bid for the Buffalo Billion that the developers said, come on, you cannot go be this obvious about the bid rigging. You need to be a little bit more subtle. Uh, and when you have the contractor saying that the Cuomo administration is so obvious in their bid rigging that you have to step back. Um, that's pretty outrageous. And you know the, the testimony came out that this is routine in the Cuomo administration that we routinely allow um, the contracts to be written in such a way that it goes to our favorite person. There is no transparency. Um, and that why it was so important for the state controller to demand that the right to oversee these contracts be returned uh, to the state controller, and especially the economic development. I've been working for 20 years to actually hold the billions of dollars that are given out annually uh, in allegedly economic development to actually have to document that we're creating jobs. And if the jobs are not created, then that money needs to be returned uh, to the taxpayer. Well, we're coming to Buffalo, we're not from Buffalo, to find out things like that. So I can't comment specifically on that, but I'm sure we'll hear from it as we go through the community today. And you've seen the itinerary on the news advisory, so um, that's what we're, what's really scheduled today. Well, I live in Syracuse. I've seen uh, Rochester and I've been down in New York City, and the struggling working class and minority communities, this trickle-down economics don't trickle down to them. It's, it goes to the rich, and where they, where they get tax breaks, instead of investing in real plant and equipment and creating jobs, there's not enough demand to justify new production. So they rearrange the assets that are already out there, you know, by buying back their stock or taking over companies. That's where all that extra money's going to. So our approach is to public investment directly into our communities to build the physical and social, social, physical infrastructure and social services that will support the people in these communities. That will create jobs directly. It will put people to work. It will put money in these communities, and it will benefit the economy from the bottom up. So I, I mean, take public money and give it to the people that need it, not the rich people that already got enough. I mean, one of the stories I was reading this morning was about IBM. And you know they were supposed to create good manufacturing jobs, and what they did instead was they basically created low-paying jobs at a call center, and eventually IBM pulled it out because this is not the top, not the type of jobs, good-paying jobs that you know people are are producing. And as I've been looking at economic development for, for 20 years, the jobs never get to the people who need them most. It never gets to the low and, and moderate income workers, and they get few people at the top to get good wages, the rest of them end up with barely above the minimum wage and showing up for the minimum wage.
answer to his question about, come on over here, the mics are here. here, here. One example that we're going to be dealing with is the central terminal. It's an obvious example. It's something like, uh, something like 30 million to, to improve it, maybe even a little bit more. And there was a refusal first to place the Amtrak station there. And that's the neighborhood that needs it. That's where the jobs need to go, not the canal side, which is what they decided. And part of the problem is it's the community that, that didn't get to decide. They wanted it at the central terminal. And instead, the state mostly, or maybe it's not, but also local people made a decision, no, we're going to put it at the canal side. And a lot of it is the most impact that happened there. So that's one example that the money that does go into even on the east side doesn't go to jobs, doesn't go to ending poverty, doesn't go to um, improving the community as a, as a whole. A lot of it still goes to development. Right? And and when, our, when our campaign in 2014, we went out there and asked them to fight what's going on and whether that would be the new big Amtrak station. And the city priorities, the state priorities were to put it downtown. So this community was neglected and that is across the state. You know, a, a Hawkins administration would put the people that have the most needs first in the priority list for public spending and development. Also, even if you look at the uh, Solar City, which is where 750 million of the billion went, so it's a huge majority, uh, has not provided the jobs that's promised, not even close. Um, the number of African Americans is, is not the percentage it's supposed to be according to the regional contracts that exist. Uh, and so it's another example of huge funding going to big corporations, they don't deliver, which is true if, if you look into the redevelopment appropriations of various different uh, subsidies that have been given mostly by the state, it's systematically they don't provide the jobs they promise, so what we find is the money it leaves. Uh, so Solar City was one of those examples where it's a huge amount of money pumped into it from the state and the people in the surrounding area, myself and yourself, are not playing part of that. So these, their rights aren't respected. It's not the rights of the people that are being benefited by the Buffalo Billions, and it's not the people who are deciding. If Buffalo decided, people here would decide differently than it's been decided by Sandra and others. Thank you very much.